as far as the customer is concerned, the interface is the product. This is a, this is a f very famous maxim or quote from Jeff Raskin. Jeff Raskin is this guy who's an HCI, human computer interaction expert. He's also, he was also one of the masterminds behind the Macintosh. So we're, I guess if you're all coming from design, you're ha somehow related to him one way or the other. He's also bold. He was also bold, but that happened later. So, sorry, just keep that. So, the, the, the question is, this really important maxim and this, this thing that is really true in most of the cases, is it, does it really apply to interfaces for games? And this is a question I've been, ask, I've been asking myself over and over again for the past four years, because the context in which you design and how you design when you're working in games is completely different to the apps uh, or to a service. So I would say initially that if you're working, if you're designing UI for apps as tools or services, then this is a big, yes, this is true. This maxim works. Why? I will show it with a really, really complex graphic. Basically, um, you have a need, the, the, the consumer has a need that needs to get satisfied. Usually it's something about purchasing a, some stuff, publishing a photo, watching a video, whatever. And it needs the tools to get to the satisfaction of that need. Now, if you just, if you just remove all user interface from this tool, it would just be a, a bunch of functionalities. Maybe just bundle together very clumsily or very similar to an MVP, a, most, uh, a minimum viable product. So use the UI here in this scenario, in this context, plays a really important role. In this way, you can get a UI in, let's say, in a given uh, uh, application, let's say Netflix. If you've, if you've tried Netflix and you've tried HBO uh, apps for, for, for playing you know, HBO products, you can see the difference. And they're actually satisfying the same need. You're going to watch a movie, you're going to watch a series, but the problem is how you interact with the application that delivers the service is crucial. If you've, played, if you, if you've run those applications in a console, in PlayStation or Xbox, you would probably get really satisfied with what Netflix, how Netflix works, regardless of the content. Of the content. So you will, get, you will be satisfied, you will see a film, but how you manage to go from your need to the actual service is, is crucial. And in the case of Netflix, it's really, really smooth, and it actually helps you a lot in many areas that are not necessarily directed to the objective, but are kind of in the limits, like discoverability of other things that might interest you, uh, getting getting other options that you didn't know it ex that existed, or just getting to set up your, 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 your context in order to play what you need, when you need it. Now, if you go for like HBO Nordic, this is also an app that you can download for PlayStation or Xbox, you want to kill yourself. You probably want to go to some very illegal place to download the series and just throw them in your VLC player, and that's it. Why? because the interface is getting in the way. It's not really helping you. You have to go through, you, have to, you, ha you will get to your product in spite of the user interface and not because of the user interface. So this is why for an app as a service or as a tool, the user interface is crucial. This could, the, the interface could give you so many possibilities. You could go for, since you're not having but as opposed to games, you're not having, uh, whoa, sorry. You don't have an art department, you don't have some people to take care of the visuals, you just maybe have a user interface designer. That's the one who's, or, or a UI department or a UX department. Those are the guys who are gonna call the shots on stuff like theming is the app, uh, let's say, at any given app, you could theme it to a particular niche audience. You can make it really generic for a massive um, audience. That's all related not to the functionalities, that the functionalities will always give you this, 
but how you portray those functionalities, how you engage the audience. So UI, so I'm just, I keep on doing this because I forgot that there's another slide. Yeah. <laughs> so this is giving you the added value. Use UI in apps and s as services and tools is giving you that added value. Sometimes you get apps that pretty much do the same as 358 apps in the, in the, in the App Store. But through UI, you can convey it in a different way. You can tailor it to particular audiences. And the outcome is always objective. If you were going to buy a ticket for a movie, then you will eventually buy a ticket for a movie. The options are you either buy it or you don't buy it. This is very objective. Well, while in games, you kind of have to go in a different way. Uh, this doesn't really work like that as far as we... Uh, in the terms that we usually talk in UI for games, which is you still have the need as a consumer. You're going to get to play a game. You're gonna, you want to have some fun. You want to see what the game is about. But the, the need of the outcome is really subjective. You're, you're not, of course, you played it or you didn't play it. But what you were getting out of it is not necessarily fixed. And it's really, really related to the core values. And the core value of the game is not really the interface. It's actually the, ga the game itself. Is this game about shooting? Is the game about racing? Is this game easy enough for me to understand? Is this game easy enough for me to access it and digest the information? Is it a chaos? What is it? Usually, you, you, the UI there needs to play the contrary role of UI in apps. It has to get out of the way as much as possible. Because what you need to have here is the content delivered as purely as possible and with less amount of friction as possible to the players. So basically, um, I think it's a bit of the other way around. But this is a very important subtitle here, as we commonly define UI in games. By the way, if you thi we're going to have the Q&A Q sessions, but if you want to stop me and ask me any questions on the slides, just feel free to do it. But yeah, it's, it's usually the other way around. While in, in the apps, everything is conveyed through the UI. In games, everything is conveyed through the game itself. UI should not, should be as less intrusive as possible. There's a designer, I think the name was Joe Parano, who had a quote that said, good, good interface is, good interface is obvious, great interface is transparent. And I think what he mentioned for that, uh, with that, is that not that they should, they shouldn't have an interface or the sh interface shouldn't be there, but rather, the interface should not be the star of the show. For apps, sorry, for apps as services and tools, this is kind of the contrary, but it still holds kind of true. But for games, this is very, very true. The interface should aid in, in for the, uh, to the player to consume the game as easy as possible. And the problem is, what, how we consider games, uh, how we consider the interface in games. And this is a, a, a problem that I've seen throughout all of the industry for many, many years. And it's that UI is considered making a button shiny. And this is a huge mistake because um, usually you could make UI just do shiny buttons. You can just give them the product at the end of the pipeline and just say, look, here's the product, here's how it works, embellish the interface, make it a bit more in tune with the theme. If it's, I don't know, World of Warcraft, make it all medieval and shit like that. But really, the problem is that if you would work with the user interface from the beginning and not at the end, Interface should not even be a problem. This, this sort of decisions, you shouldn't even have to have them at the, at the end of the pipeline. And a lot of game, the game decisions, gameplay decisions, could arise because you've inserted the user interface development 
in the first stages. So what I, how, I, how I think we should be considering user interface in games is more like this. This, I, I'm, I'm throwing some PlayStation uh, slides there, but it could work for anything. You don't interface as we can see with this. Oh, look, look at the nice little things in the screen. You know, oh, there's the energy bar or whatever bar. I don't care. Uh, it tells me how much energy you have. Actually, the interface is this one. This is just a representation of a very, very limited amount of information that the player needs. But the interface li lies here. The controllers are the interface. That's the communication from the player with the game. So if in the wrong approach of, uh, of interfaces, uh, of UI in games, I would get a task that says, hey, Fernando, look, we've done the game. Throw in some, some cool graphics there. You know? It should be cool and zombie-ish or whatever. Well, actually, if you've planned UI from the beginning, game designers should be arranging meetings with UI designers to figure out what's the most natural way to convey the actions to the player. How, is, how, how can they spawn the different uh, guns with as, less of uh, as natural as it feels? How would you go for the items? Uh, how would you pick up stuff in the game? It's things that are more related to gameplay and not related to actual visual representations. Of course, this still needs to be done, but you will find out that if you do it in, in this way, you'll find out that a lot of the problems that you have here are actually solved at this stage, not in the visual representations. I had a situation at work some last week, I think, and of course I can't show any images because of multiple NDAs, but there was a team working on a prototype and they were asking me for some help because they needed to have this user interface where they had five different buttons and two chunks of big information and they didn't know how to pre represent it well because it's a little phone. You need to have all this condensed there. It just didn't work. It didn't matter how they, how they displayed it. It, doesn't matter, it didn't matter how well they designed it. It just wasn't working. People were not seeing what they needed to see. They couldn't relate to the buttons or the interaction. I got together with the guys and it turned out that four, three of the buttons they were portraying could have been solved in this stage so basically, they could have, since this is a game for mobile, they could have done gestures instead of actual buttons. So when you're doing a gesture in a, in a mobile game, you don't need to show a physical representation of the, act, of the button. You, know, you, can, you just have to tell the player, look, if you swipe, this, this will happen. So after, after several iterations on this, they ended up with one button and one chunk of text, and that was perfectly visible. That worked like a charm, and the problem was that they were considering interface as this, while they should be considering interface as this. So I think that's, I would say that's one of the biggest problems we face today. And I would say, in games at least, unless we as designers or as UI artists or UI designers don't step up to explain this sort of problematics, we will always be treated as the guys who embellished the guys who make the shiny buttons. And design, if, you, if you, a lot of you are designers, know that it's not about how it looks, it's about how it works. So going back to what Jeff Raskin said, is interface the product? I would say kind of yes, but I'm more happy with, with a quote from Brenda Romero, which is a game, play, a game designer, which is interface is the gameplay. Because in games, you still have lots of other areas to consider that do make the game. You have the visuals, you have the game design, you have controllers that should be user interface, but it's all about gameplay. It's not about, your, it's not about the interface itself. And I think, yeah, I think I had more, but I, we can wrap this up around here. <laughs>